the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Galatians 4 and verse 7 Be patient as I run through these scriptures. Establishing our identification. Believers are classified according to identification. It says, Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God, even through Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, calls us the righteousness of God in Christ. It says, For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, the most probably, the most classic rendition from verse 1 of our, a thorough theological exegesis of our oneness with Christ. And you have he quickened, the Bible says, who were dead in trespasses and sins. We're reading to verse 6. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Hallelujah, verse 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, pay attention, had quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved. Verse 6, it says, and had raised us up. Say amen. amen. Together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. Now please listen. These are the fundamentals of our curriculum for growth and maturity. You have to know who you are in Christ. And that this classification is based on our identification. Are we together now? A number of other scriptures, but these ones have, have given us sufficient to show us from different angles how that we have been joined to Christ. But then the second classification is based on our function. An assignment so the first classification is based on our identification but the second classification is based on our function and our assignment a few scriptures Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 now you see what we are called now the description begins to change according to functions for we are his workmanship Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are not only joint heirs, we are not only sons of God, we are his workmanship. Matthew chapter 14, chap Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16, Jesus is teaching now. Ye are the light of the world. Here's another name we are called, according to function, we are light. A city, he says, that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Next verse. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Last verse. It says, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you begin to read from verse 13, it tells us you are the salt of the earth, he says. That if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savor, wherewith shall it be salted again? It's, it's no good except to be thrown on a foot and trampled by men. So he calls us light. He calls us salt. John 15 and verse 16. John 15 and verse 16. 
it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you this is no strange word to us here to ordain means to commission to authorize to legitimize that ye should go forth and bring forth fruits he calls us fruit bearers and that your fruit should remain our classification according to functions second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20 second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20 the bible says now then we are ambassadors hallelujah so you're not only a son or a daughter you're not only joint heir he says we are ambassadors representatives for christ Revelations chapter 5 and verse 10 and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign so here the Bible calls believers kings calls believers priests last scripture first Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 very classic rendition it says but ye are a chosen generation now look the names now a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people the bible says mandated to show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light so the bible calls believers different names according to identification our oneness with christ and according to our functions according to first john chapter one the gospel of john john chapter one from verse six the bible uses a very interesting expression that we would find being used consistent in scripture right to revelation it says there was a man sent from God his name was John the Bible never says here interestingly that that man was a Baptist scripture does not even recognize him as a Baptist the Bible does not even say he was a prophet the first description given according to John's synoptic account of this man who we later would call the Baptist would later call a prophet was a witness the same John came for a witness his assignment to bear witness to the light that through his witness all men might believe here was John's assignment John did not come to prophesy John did not come to use water he came for a witness Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 we're discussing being a witness now Jesus this was Jesus after his resurrection the Bible says he tarried with them again for a period of 40 days teaching them the matters or the things that pertain unto the kingdom and here he was having his final words with them so that he would levitate to heaven and he was talking about the restoration of the nation of Israel and they asked him a question they said would you at this time restore the nation of Israel he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put within his care verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and to the end that ye shall be now he uses the same term for John for the church jesus calls us witnesses unto me then he begins to define the geography of witness both in jerusalem and in judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth revelations chapter one from verse one the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must surely come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto John we're reading to say five or six the key verse is verse five but let's read on 
who bear record of the word of God listen carefully and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw verse 3 blessed is he that readeth and that hear the words of this prophecy say I am blessed and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand verse 4 it says John unto the seven churches which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne verse 5 read with me please if you are a Christian ready one to read and from Jesus Christ who is the hold on Jesus here is called himself a faithful witness a witness that was faithful to the latter Jesus himself is called witness there are not many times when the bible uses the same description for jesus for believers for instance god is light believers are also called light are we together yes now here jesus is called the faithful witness the same way he called us validating the fact that he said as he is so are we in this life a witness we are witnesses now write this down please who is a witness what does it mean to be a witness please pay attention remember that every time we converge and we gather the primary assignment of a true shepherd is to mentor to teach to train to raise to build to supply the spiritual meal of knowledge and understanding hallelujah a witness very interesting dictionary definition is one who has knowledge about a matter one who sees an event happening is called a witness if you get this description it should trouble you immediately a witness is one who has knowledge about a matter a dictionary definition one who sees an event happening so how in the world do we qualify to be witnesses when physically speaking we were not there more than 2,000 years ago Jesus came he died and now we are proposing an idea and according to the dictionary definition it says a witness is one who should have been there to have seen that event this is my definition of a witness a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is a validator of a claim another definition a witness is one who provides testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know a witness is one who provides testimonial evidence this is a legal expression one who provides testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know is a witness so a witness is a validator of a claim usually in legal terms now a witness is not needed until there is a contention of a claim is that true you do not need a witness in the court of law we have judges here and magistrates bless your heart and when you go to the court of law you do not need a witness until and except and unless there is a contention over a claim then you introduce a witness watch this now a witness is a validator of a claim so if Jesus said the Spirit of God comes upon you you shall be witnesses that means that we are mandated to be validators of certain claims that he made for instance he said he was the son of God for instance he said God is love for instance he said it is not the father's will that all men should perish there are many many claims that Jesus made 
God made from scripture Jesus came as the express image of the father and he buttressed on those claims and Jesus left the disciples with a warning and a caution that there are men and there are forces on earth that will spend their life investing their moment their days their intelligence to devalidate those claims and he said there are many scattered across your region from Jerusalem he said to Samaria to Judea to the uttermost part of the earth I am mandating you to spread yourselves across the length and breadth of this side of my kingdom with a singular assignment to prove that everything I said is not a lie witnesses are we together so a witness has an assignment of validating claims the reason why we need to teach this is because the average believer does not really understand the responsibility dimension of being in the faith life largely speaking our, our theology ends just in an appreciation of what jesus did on the cross and then the fact that there are all kinds of blessings accorded us by reason of his death, burial, and resurrection. And that is correct. But there are responsibilities in this kingdom. And the primary responsibility of a believer is not to be a businessman. Listen carefully. It's not to be a man of God. It's not to be a pilot, an engineer many times we define ourselves by the geography of the witness not the revelation of the witness we're going to be discussing that most of the things we call ourselves i am an apostle i am a prophet i am a banker a ceo i'm a judge i'm a politician those are not the things and the people that we are those are just the geography of the witness regardless the geography the assignment is the same step into that system and you have an assignment to not rest until that system comes under the governing influence until the claims of jesus is received and institutionalized within that sphere you are not done are we together yes, sir. witnesses everybody say i'm a witness here's the average believers understanding about the faith life if you're born again and you're fortunate to be led and mentored by a pastor that has sufficient spiritual understanding as far as scripture and doctrine is concerned then you are taught and mentored along the lines of your right in Christ and so on and so forth and when you know that then we get busy with our lives isolating them from our faith life so this is church and this is God's thing are we together now so from monday down till saturday or whatever non-church day we believe that god stay out of my business i'm trying to build a career i'm trying to raise children i'm trying to get married i'm trying to have children i'm trying to have a business i'm trying to make money i'm trying to survive in nigeria we say and so we have created a dichotomy that when it has to do with the things of god we do it when we come to church we sing praises we fall under the anointing we stand up we learn we share fellowship and then we go back to what we call our normal lives the bible never teaches that there is no dichotomy your primary assignment here god is not caesar don't say give to caesar what belongs to caesar god is the owner of everything if you give to caesar give to caesar but god is not caesar is either his lord of everything or his lord of nothing at all so there is no such thing as church and then my life no your life is interwoven into one singular assignment you are a witness sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday witness on jeans a witness on suit witness are we together now pay attention please if you do not understand this and you create a dichotomy to your christian experience you will number one give the devil room to shred the other non-church parts of your life in pieces he will occupy you and waste your time so you find people say oh god hold on i'm trying to make ends meet and god says who created this dichotomy 
you go and read your bible there was no such thing as god's affair and our affair all the people who had alternatives were idol worshippers and they paid for it or backsliding believers when the jews fell apart and they left god they went back to their own thing read the bible there's only one subject one pursuit kingdom that was why they had children kingdom that was why they married kingdom that was why they lived well kingdom that was why god showed up kingdom that was why they prospered kingdom that was why they multiplied kingdom now we have kingdom and other things the other things god took time to warn us about is the reason why we don't have time the time 24 hours was calculated to be enough if your focus is kingdom the moment you add something outside of god's original design time will never be enough please pay attention he calls us witnesses so here's what we do we believe the only spiritual time and moment in our life is when we're having a devotional in the morning or when we are praying or when we are fasting the moment we say in jesus name and say amen what we mean is god i've given you your quota allow me do whatever i want to do if there's any need for emergency you just hang on i will call on you to help in my affair and now he's watching no wonder many people live lives that seem to have a semblance of success and then after many years of toiling and laboring we end up in frustration carry all kinds of diseases and sicknesses that come from worry we are angry we are frustrated because we think that god scammed us and used us for his agenda and did not give us a portion for our own agenda it's one of the number one reason why people are afraid of giving god everything they suspect he will interrupt their agenda and he will are we blessed tonight witnesses let me tell you this according to scripture everything in a believer's life every moment every activity must synergize itself to one goal one goal one goal being a witness validating a claim revealing jesus and bringing glory to him can i tell you this your life will find such joy when everything about you is connected to being a witness connected to the revelation of jesus connected to kingdom come now when you are trying to trust god for resources and your motif is that you will be an effective witness there's no need to be ashamed of it you can now pray with boldness lord bless me and open doors for me to be a millionaire and a billionaire do you know why because you can defend that desire if they ask you why do you like money you say no 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 don't mistake me it is not a blind pursuit for money i have found out that the nature of my witness requires that there should be sufficient resources and so like a faithful person in pursuit of being an effective witness my first assignment based on the job description is to be a billionaire now you can stand tall and you are not just a money monger because your pursuit is connected to kingdom come are we together now there are people who the geography of your witness for instance requires that you are in government if we ask you why are you pushing the issue of politics why does it look like a do or die affair if you tell us look all my life i just sense i'm a politician that may be a sufficient sociological reason from from the kingdom standpoint there is no justification for that pursuit let me tell you this the condition to secure god's commitment is that behind the desire for your activity there must be a revelation and a motivation that i am a witness as a man of god why do you want a crowd of so many people i think it's so that i can it will be that i'm anointed no god does not do business that way a witness a validator 
you see let me tell you this brothers and sisters people of god the reason why it looks like god does not answer many prayers is because he vets the motivation behind them not just what you are asking for or seeking for remember it does not take god time to bless to lift to change it is the corruption of our motive that makes it seem as if his ears are deafened to our prayers so when you say god give me something he does not just say okay i died for you take he's not a stupid god just because he is love does not mean he's a fool he moves at the backside of your desire and vets and checks the motivation and he finds out that there is such a blind carnal desire to prove a point to do all sorts of things and he says no the urgency of my assignment and the desire for witness will not allow me to invest in this corrupted motive your first assignment therefore would be to purify your motive to align it to kingdom come is god helping us you know why jesus was called the faithful witness the faithfulness part there was because when he came even though he was the word he had no business pursuing any agenda of his from day one at age 12 when his colleagues were jumping around and trying to understand how their environment was jesus was about his father's business that's what made him a faithful witness at the height of his fame when many of us would not even survive the things that come with that level of honor he was careful to say i do not do the will of myself he says i only do what i see my father do what level of submission and brokenness and total surrender no wonder the father said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased you have become my thoughts and my intentions in action everybody say i am a witness a validator of a claim satan look up please and his cohorts demons have created systems and structures to see to it that jesus christ and the reality of his lordship is not understood and is not enthroned in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities they have used all kinds of strategies remember when jesus resurrected the first strategy was to use money and pay people and say just say the disciples came and carried his body is still the strategy till today satan will pay and do anything provided you will switch and change your assignment and listen if you do not understand this teaching we will keep having piles of people in the church and will lose the potency of the power of god and the ability to transform society with the gospel a witness so if there are five politicians whilst all of them are celebrating election and this one is saying i want pdp i want apc i want this one and everybody is celebrating and saying all sorts of things you return back and you are not party conscious you are assignment conscious you see that now now that you are there you don't just sit down and say now i've suffered my first assignment is to recover every money that i've have the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar has stolen no sir no sir that is a mindset that is not kingdom see when we talk about defending god's interest we are not talking about being a fanatic god's interest is not for christians alone god's interest is for all men you if you don't understand god's interest it will look like some negative tribal or partisan kind of thing no god's interest is the secret to peace is the secret to joy and development if you truly pursue god's interest all and sundry will benefit from your leadership not just for politics but for everyone you have to know the god whose interest you want to defend he is love he is light he loves all men this is the one whose interest you are defending are we blessed tonight yes i live my entire life conscious of the fact that i am a witness and if i ever will be involved in anything i have to find kingdom come in it 
if kingdom come is not represented i am not interested it's as simple and as honest as that can i tell you this we must get to a point in our lives where everything we do everything we do is not just that we are believers but we are passionately we are indoctrinated with this revelation that god is depending on me to validate something about him he's using me like a painter's canvas and a brush there is something the world does not know about him there is a lot of misrepresentation about god and he sends you go and correct that perception so in the business world for instance they make all kinds of statements like until you cut corners you cannot prosper and yet the bible says god can help men prosper in the dignity of kingdom integrity but that confusion remains in that space because there are no witnesses so god would have to raise men the generic name is being a witness but he will push you to the geography of your assignment more on that next week but my assignment today is to wake you up from just the consciousness of ceo the consciousness of apostle prophet the name he calls us witness i'm a witness you are a witness a validator so anywhere i see the name of the lord going down the drain don't say it's none of my business my that is exactly my business it is my assignment to walk in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit and devise a strategy to correct that narrative so if i hear people say god does not heal again god does not help people again aha my ears are itching because you are calling my name there if i hear that people serve god and go down there is no dignity serving god it does not pay to serve jesus uh -uh, uh -uh. there is a misrepresentation of the father's intention you must fraternize with satan for you to be a gospel artist or an artist or whatever to go far you must fraternize with powers you must bow down to spirits then your ears are itching no and god says let me use you as a as a as a sample to show men that you can rise let me tell you this you have not yet seen the power of god until you are ready to be a witness you have not yet seen the favor of god you have not yet seen his ability to shift systems and structures until you are ready to be a witness a witness has a point to prove not your point god's point let me tell you how the nature of our witness is for a long time god will keep quiet so that the accusation will be clear do not mistake in god's silence god's silence is a strategy that every time they say no one rises in this family let's go back and serve idols and he seemed to keep quiet and you are saying god move now uh -uh. that's not how he walks he keeps quiet because in his realm time does not matter in one day he can do anything your entire lifetime is less than a day so when you say god hurry up he said i don't understand that language hurry means what eternity minus five years does not mean anything to him so he keeps quiet listen carefully when it's time for him to arise when he prepares a witness he will give that witness something in the court of law that is called a token of truthfulness the name is evidence when you see god silent it is because he's preparing his evidence a witness is useless in the court of law if you do not come with evidence your evidence is a token of truthfulness the bible says the end of all strife is when you bring a token of truthfulness mm. one who provides a testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know sit down and write this please what is an evidence an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion 
and evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact please write it down an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16 hebrews 6 and verse 16 for verily men swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife this is another name for evidence is called an oath of confirmation you stole my money do you have a witness yes go and bring the witness whoever come were you there yes did you see it yes what is your evidence that's the next question woe betides a witness who does not have an evidence it takes time as security people it takes time to build an evidence so all the journey all your experiences good and bad all the painful things the things that the bible says we know that all things work together it is a journey of building the evidence to your witness all the times of pain the times of prayer in the night that looks like god is not answering you god why are you silent he said you don't know the case you are sent to defend that's why you don't know the kind of witness i have to build two years may not build that kind of case you are supposed to present god to a family that has believed in idols for 150 years oh moses a rod will not be enough pharaoh is a wizard a rod will not convince pharaoh enough you will need a rod you will need signs and wonders you will need miracles of nature you will even need his firstborn please sit down hear me god is calling you into ministry and after 10 years you are saying lord release me he says stay just keep praying god what is it about my own ministry my colleagues have gone ahead stay don't go anywhere let me tell you he's building evidence there is a level of power and grace that will come upon your life when he shoots you like an arrow in one day you will do what has not been done in one year hold on not everything in your life that looks negative is negative is the building of the evidence hold on do you know sometimes as the people who work with cia and intelligence for them to build evidence sometimes they will have to subject themselves to be part of the problem in disguise is that true could that be why you came from the family you came from could that be why when things were working for others it didn't work for you god had to how else will they believe god lived if you did not pass through such a thing so he started follow the prophetic drama your life has been acting that you are not seeing scene one both parents go to be with the lord from your birth and you are wondering lord why is my life like this and heaven the script writer my goodness the script writer is writing and just when a car would have hit you when you said jesus is left and you thought no 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 it's part of the whole thing a day will come when you stand and say jesus is lord if anyone dares to say prove it you're going to ask them i hope you have time because i have an overwhelming evidence so choose one you want to see is it the fact that he lifted me
me from the married clay? Is it from the fact that he blessed me in the midst of my enemies? Is it from the fact that he waited for every negative prophecy to finish? Then he started changing it one by one in the presence of everyone. Is it that he took me to a foreign land and blessed me there? Which of the evidences do you need? That is alive and heaven stands to say my goodness my god what a witness what a witness indeed what a witness indeed mm. as a man of god hear me do not interpret things from a carnal standpoint it takes time to build evidence the stronger the evidence the more effective the witness so Jesus said, the ultimate evidence that I am from God, destroy this temple after three days. Since death is the last enemy that can be destroyed in your realm. If I say I am Lord, you will not believe it. Whoever owns the earth must be able to exit out of the earth and return himself back. So take my life. If I come back, then we'll see. And they said with all pleasure we even release an armed robber for your sake we've been planning to kill you now that you've offered yourself with jesus joy when he hung upon that cross he didn't hang for five minutes he hung long enough for history to capture his stay there when they were driving him to golgotha it was painfully slow are you seeing why you read the bible and sometimes it annoys you just summarize it from Pontius Pilate he died no it's not witness enough it's not evidence enough so he begins to give the details they slapped him and he was quiet and he said I can call 10,000 angels yet I keep quiet and then when he hung upon the cross he said Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabachthani take notes that the father turned his back the, the the new birth theology they did not come from the evidence the entire exegesis of the new creation was derived from the witness paul studied all the evidences and that's where he built the case for the new believer i have been crucified with christ he said that happened only because there was an evidence of the cross today the sign of the christian faith is that cross nobody can deny that he hung on a cross when he died watch this when he resurrected he was not in a rush to come out he insisted until there was one person to see him and when mary saw him she said rabboni he said don't touch me i'm just happy you have seen it now run quickly before you forget run and go and tell the people that you've seen me i'm alive God is not done with all the arsenals of his evidence. There is the last one coming. One glorious morning. Believers and non-believers alike. Whether you believe in him or not, there will be a shout of a trumpet. That one does not need speaker. We don't need to buy line arrays. From heaven. When you hear that, your banking, your schooling, your preaching oh may it happen during koinonia i drop the mic for you and i say save johnny we've been saying repent if you are not interested that will be the ultimate evidence no event in human history would have ever happened like that a massive disappearance of people suddenly the king of kings will say no confusion you didn't believe in me now you watch me in the moment a twinkling of an eye is only you who will see it oh all those who are not born again will not even know anything has happened they will just know that the earth has divided almost into two where are the other people this will become a bestseller after the rapture because this will be the only valid compass that helps people back no other book will matter what else is there and people will have to come and check we'll leave all these bibles for them they will read it but that is the ultimate witness but for now there are brothers 
there are sisters there are husbands there are wives there are nations that there are territories that have vehemently refused that jesus is lord some call him a prophet some call him a wise man some call him an intelligent character that passed through history some called him a founder of one of the four thousand religions we have he says who do men say that i am and peter said no to describe you i need the holy spirit to help me i can't do this on my own thou art christ there is a world that is waiting for the demonstration the validation of every claim of jesus he's broken that project into several assignments what you call purpose what you call your assignment is a portion of your contribution to that universal project the name thy kingdom come there is a world listen to me very carefully that is still in doubt don't you say because there are churches full of people everybody knows god on earth out of over 7.8 or so billion people only about 2.5 2.6 billion people are professing christians including backsliders including those who may not pseudo christian activities that's not a good statistic and the father is saying where are they in nigeria there are all kinds of things plaguing and troubling the name of the lord in this country and god is saying i have men i have children but i need witnesses and there are many people who have said lord i'm available and he said being available is not enough if you are going to stand before pharaoh to advocate an exodus you need more than an instruction you need an evidence pharaoh is a wizard he does not let people go just like that and when the heat starts coming he can say okay you women go but leave your men and leave your children or he will say leave your children and like the nation of israel was saying everybody is going but you will need an evidence the entire journey watch this the entire journey of moses visiting and revisiting egypt was to one end to convince pharaoh that he met the god of the bible the owner of the people he was oppressing and he said thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go and pharaoh said okay i've heard you so if you met him what did he give you as a token of truthfulness and he said well for starters he gave me a rod and when he threw it down while it became a serpent pharaoh looked at him and said shame on you and the god who sent you if this is what he gave you to come and make me release 2.5 people go back and tell him that 2.5 million people would not live on so small a witness could it be that some of us are already witnesses but the nature of the evidence that we are presenting the court will not allow our families go the, the level of power that you have the level of grace that you operate in is too small for the kind of result that your assignment requires therefore paul gives us a formula that grace and peace can be multiplied so that you stand to a point where you have sufficient evidence acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth brothers and sisters with the holy ghost look at the extent the assignment of jesus required overwhelming witness as soon as he showed up he didn't have time to go to a radio station to say i'm here evidence is all around your mother-in-law is sick madam stand up the kingdom has come to you he gathered people and he said i want to teach you on this kingdom that i have brought and they listened they listened till they were hungry and some of them started going wicked man you wasted our time three days talking nonsense he said call them back i want to feed them and the disciples said don't don't aggravate these people they will kill us here and a young lad came with five loaves and two fish he blessed it 
and he says you the servers alongside the audience learn the power of this kingdom that we boast of go and serve and as they went the bread began to multiply ah it's not what you have is what is on what you have dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 